everyone. Welcome back to another week of 51's Tips and Tricks. This week, we're going to be taking a look at 3D detections and how to add 3D detection labels to your point cloud data sets. This t today, we'll be taking a look at the Quick Start Groups data set, as it is a subset of the Kitty data set, and it's good for looking at some pot LiDAR point cloud data sets. We'll start by loading in our data set and instantly selecting our group slice of PCD. This is a way for in group data sets to select a slice of the data set that you're interested in. So that way all the following API commands will pass you data from that subset. In this subset, there is also the left and right images from the car that we will not be taking a look at today. After loading in our data set, I've taken the liberty to uh, download and you know, load my data set. We can launch it in the app. And we're met with these gray images. Now this is not a bug. If we click in, we can see our point clouds right away. However, I don't want to be seeing these gray images. One way to get around these gray images is to use the 51 utils 3D and compute orthographic projection images. Orthographic projection images is a great way for you to create a bird's eye view from top down on your data set to not only allow you to generate thumbnails, but give you more context of what exactly which scene you're looking at. So we can run this. It'll take a little bit, but it runs pretty fast. And you'll see that we have now from our LiDAR images, these top down images. Uh, we are also going to go ahead and add the out group slice. This is also going to add a separate slice within our data set where the samples are just the orthographic projections in case we're interested in looking at just them. So we can see now that our thumbnails are populated. I can click on this and it's much easier to visualize which scene is which. So before we dive into our 3D detections, let's take a look at an existing one here. So I will hover over this one that's a little bit further back. We can see some things that are should look familiar if you're familiar with our 2D detections and some new ones. So we can see that we have a label, this one being car, but instead of just being the bounding box, we have now three things designating the location and orientation of our bounding box. That being dimensions, location, and rotation. Dimensions will refer to the width, length, and height of our bounding box. The location refers to the global coordinates in X, Y, and Z of the absolute center of the bounding box. And the rotation refers to, in radians, the amount of rotation along that axis. So whether it's the X, the Y, or the Z axis that the bounding box should be rotated in. So to start, um, we'll do a very basic example where we have our location B000, we'll put this detection at the very center of our coordinate plane. Rotation will be 000, so it should be a standard bounding box, as well as the dimensions be 333. This should just be one big cube. We will then add the bounding box afterwards to our sample and then save and view. So let's take a look. After loading in our app and our new detection, we can see our big cube here right away. Now to note, the absolute center is being used when we use location. It is not the top center or bottom center, but you can see that the center designated by this uh, coordinate axis helper is in the absolute center of our cube here. To get a handle on the coordinate system and feel more comfortable by increasing which value you know which way you're going to move, we're going to move our location to 0, 2, 4 and our dimensions to 1, 2, 3. This way we should see in our x axis the smallest amount of bounding box, our y axis we should see a little bit more, and our z axis we'll see the most. So I can run this and take a look. And when I open it up, we can see our bounding box has moved. It's now up in the air, floating away. And we can see on our x axis, which is this one here, left to right, we are in the absolute center. We haven't moved because our location is zero. In our y axis, you can see that we're up to the right too. So I'm looking at this left to right now. And we can also see that designated here with the bottom of the box being of size two. And then an up in the Z, this is our vertical height. You can see the bounding box be the tallest. And this is our Z dimension. Now you can play around with these until you get a little bit more comfortable with uh, which direction means which. But general, generally, this orange is our left to right. This green 
is our Y, is our forward and back, and the blue is our Z, is our height, our up and down. This is all written here. Now that we know this, we can play around with some rotation. Now rotation is given in radians, so I'll be using numpy in order to define those radians. But let's just start with zero. We'll get our box back to the middle. So to start, we can look at zero, zero, zero. Our box won't be rotated, should look familiar. And here's our box. We can see that it is in our absolute center here, just ready to be rotated. Now I can add some rotation here. I'll do a quarter radian on the X axis. By rotating a quarter radian on the X axis, we'll be able to see that along this orange axis, we've rotated to the left. And then we are now have a radian rotation of a quarter radian along the X axis. Now, if you are trying to load in your detections for the first time, and you are struggling to get them aligned. Unlike other traditional bounding box uh, in 2D, there is not a well-agreed pawn standard for 3D bounding boxes. What this can lead to is sometimes Y in some data sets is Z and they're flipped and you have to flip them yourself. Sometimes a uh, certain direction will be negative. So when they say Y, they mean negative to go up and neg uh, you know, positive to go down and you know such conventions like this. Rotation is none different. So when you're landing your buying boxes, I recommend going down the row uh, one by one until you are certain that your location is in the right spot, your dimensions in the right spot, and then finally last, your rotation is correct. Why is this the case? Well, I, it's easy to tell with locations and dimensions if they're both correct, that you know, given uh, a correct rotation array, my box will be aligned correctly, right? You should be able to tell fairly quickly hey, this bounding box isn't near any LIDAR points. There's no way there's a car here. My location is incorrect. Or likewise, the LIDAR points that I am seeing are very large. My bounding box is very small. There must be an issue with my width, length, and height. And you go back to your data set or the schema, and you can check to make sure everything is aligned. With rotation, it's a little tricky because imagine you tried to do all three at once, and you have now gotten to your bounding boxes. And when you go to visualize it, well, my bounding box looks like this. And based off all our previous examples with uh, no rotation, this looks pretty similar. Just based off eyesight, I would say that this box has not been rotated at all. However, we know that this box has been rotated a half radian on long two axes. And now it becomes a problem where I don't know if my width, length, and height is correct and things like that. So uh, rotation is very powerful. Um, it can also be a very easy way to get tripped up when you're getting started with 3D detections. So uh, maybe more of my trick for today's tips and tricks is when aligning your bounding boxes, I highly suggest you save rotation for last if it is an issue that you're troubleshooting through. Lastly, there is one more type of 3D polylines, 3D labels, which is a little spoiler, 3D polylines. 3D polylines are defined given a set of coordinates the way it works is you set a pair and they will draw a line between these pairs of coordinates. So for instance, between 111 and 022, it will draw a line. I would like to note that if you are interested in closing your shape, make sure that you finish and start at the same coordinate so you get a line drawing to that vertex. This can be used for several things such as um, designating areas of interest such as like a lane on a car driving interest, uh, data set or a, like a no-go zone. I've seen that before with cars as well, um, that you should be avoiding certain areas. Uh, just like before, 51 does not have detection labels specifically for 3D. So before we looked at FO detection, this time we're looking at FO polyline. There's no need for a separate object. It's just how you pass in arguments that changes whether or not it will be a 2D label or a 3D label. So for this case, we use points 3D to designate that this is a 3D polyline. So after creating our polyline, we add it to our sample, save, save the data set, and we can view. We can take a look at our sample here, and we can see I have a triangle here. Now, the issue with this triangle, while it is a nice triangle, I'm very proud of it, is from certain angles, I lose my triangle and I can't really see it anymore. So now maybe I'm taking a bird's eye view here, I, I can't really see it, right? 
So there's a couple ways we can handle this. One, we can roughly shuffle all of our field colors to get different colors on our bounding boxes and labels. So now my triangle here is blue. It's a little bit easier for C. And my bounding box has also changed color. Maybe it's not my labels that is bothering me. Maybe it's the LiDAR points are a little too bright. You're also able to change the color scheme of this by going through here and you can change it to intensity. You can pass RGB, especially if there's been an RGB color map passed along and whatever is best for you to visualize your point cloud data set. If you ever have any questions about point cloud data sets, you're struggling to get your bounding boxes aligned or you just don't know where to start, oh, feel free to hop over to our community Slack. There'll be a link below in our description. We always have people there both in the community and at Voxel 51 that are eager to help you. Also, if you haven't left yet a star on our GitHub, it's greatly appreciated. It means the world for us and it helps us continue to grow the community and bring in more people to further along the prosperity of 51. That's all I have for this week's tips and tricks. Stay tuned for next week where I'll bring some more.